In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you about binary counting and variable types. So, we're going to start off with just normal counting as we do nowadays in the decimal system. So, what I do here is you see line 19, 20, and 21. 21 contains the ones, the 20 contains the tens, and the 19 contains the hundreds. So, if we count from 1 to 100, you see we go from 0, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then we repeat, we're going back to the zero and say one, two, three, four for the numbers. The problem is that when we reach the nine, we have to go one step further and we create the ten. But the ten is nothing more than starting a second position with once until we reach, for example, 99. And at 99, we're also run out of positions because there's nothing after the nine. So we start all over again with zero and add, sorry here, these two zeros, and we add a one for the hundreds, and we continue. So we have 10 different positions, which is decimal, deci is, means 10. So from zero to nine are 10 positions, and then we continue. There are also different systems, like octal, and octal counts to eight, so from zero to seven, and then it repeats, hexadecimal, and that's a funny one, because hexadecimal, hexa means 16. And as you can see here, we only have 10 different numbers. So what you do, I'm going to copy paste this here for your reference. We continue with A, B, C, D, E, and F. And in this way, you have 16 different characters, which you can use to count with 16 positions. But the most important system for us is the binary system. And the binary system only has two positions. So if you compare it to the decimal system, we have here a zero or a one. So it's either one or zero, true or false, on, off, high, low, etc. So we can use it in an electrical circuit to represent logic, because in a circuit either the current floats or it doesn't. And how this works is that basically exact, exactly the same. It could be a little bit hard in your mind to understand because here we go from zero to nine and then we continue with a new line. So this is the ones, the tens and the hundreds. But in binary it goes a lot faster since we only have two possibilities. So if you look at this line 31, you see zero, one, but we're already running out of numbers. So we start a new line with one zero 1, 1, but then again we're running out of positions, of our numbers, so we start a new position. So then we can continue for a while, and then we need to start a fourth position. That's how we continue. But how do you know which number it represents in decimal? Well, I'll show you here. We use 2 to the power, which actually means multiply by itself. So 2 to the power 0 is 1, 2 to the power 1 is 2 because we're not multiplying. 2 to the power 2 is 2 times 2, which is 4. 2 to the power 3 is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. 2 to the power 4 is 2 times 2 times 2. And then you have 16. And if you continue this, then you get larger and larger numbers. So the largest number we can create here with 1111 on four positions is 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is 15. So this number here, 1111, represents 15. And you might think, but you told about 16 in this one. But keep in mind that this is, although this is 4, it requires five position because we also have the ones which are starting from zero. So if you have a number lower than 265, you ha need eight binary positions, or seven binary positions, because if you sum them up, then you have 255. If you need 256, then you need eight positions. And that's how it continues. So if we look here and we translate binary to decimal, then you see here a number 1011101. So 
I'm going to tell you how you can easily translate this from binary to decimal. And the fun part is we're going from right to left, not from left to right, from right to left, the same as you do with your normal numbers, with the tens. So we start with the first position, and as I told you before, the first position represents a 1. You can see it here, it represents a 1. So the 1 is high, so it represents a 1 in decimal. I wrote in this third column all the decimal values. Since the second position here is 0, we don't need to take it into account. It goes for this 0 and that 0 as well, so I put them to 0. So the third position is a 1, but it represents 4. The 8 is a 0. This one represents 16. So then we continue to this one and that one. And if you sum all these numbers together, then you get 181. And it's nice if you pick some random binary number, which is quite easy, you just pick random zeros and ones, and try to do this for yourself, because then you get familiar with all this binary to decimal conversion. So what does all this have to do with variables? Well, a computer works with binaries, so it only understands zeros and ones. So when we define a variable in our Arduino program, it reserves a certain amount of bits to store the value of your variable. Well, an Arduino doesn't have that much memory. So if you create big programs, it can run out of memory. Therefore, it's nice that if you learn from the beginning to take a data type which is sufficient, but the smallest amount you can use. So for example, if I want to store only numbers from 0 to 20, you can see here that a byte is sufficient. But if I want to go further than 255, you have to use an integer, which is 16-bit. And you can see it runs from minus 32,768 to 32,767. This is because the zero is also there, it's not minus, not plus. So if you want to use a positive number, which is larger than this 32,767, you can use an unsigned integer. And unsigned means that it forgets about the minus or plus and uses this bit for even more numbers. So if you use an Arduino Uno, then you can go from 0 to 65,535, which is 2 to the power 16 minus 1. If you use an Arduino Du, then you have a 32-bit system. So you can even address more memory and you can go over 4 billion, which is 2 to the power 32 minus 1. If you have an Arduino Uno with 32 bits, you can use a long and an inside long. And you will see that a long is a 32-bit memory reservation with taking the signed into account, so you can say plus or minus. But if you use an unsigned long, you basically have the same as an unsigned integer on the Arduino Du. So the Arduino Du and the Uno can use the same amount of uh, store. Uh, sorry, the large. So the Arduino Du and the Uno can store the same number as the biggest number, which is 32 bit. Only for the Du, you can use an inside int, and for the Uno, you have to use an inside long. The last type is the float, which is a 32-bit number. The thing is, you can store any number between minus 3.40282 to the power 38 to 3.40282 to the power 38. The thing is that you, with a float, it's a kind of special number. So be, um, looking at these numbers, it looks like you cannot store, for example, 6.50, but actually you can. The idea is that you have like six or seven positions in total, and somewhere in between there is a float, um, floating point. So what you can do is store 6.50 without any problem, but you cannot store 6.50678943 because the number of decimals is too big. 
So if you have a temperature measure device, so like a temperature sensor or whatever, you can easily use float to store like 23.76 degrees. So it kind of depends on the resolution you want. An Arduino is a lot faster in calculating with integers instead of floats. But if you uh, search on the Arduino website, you see a lot more information about these data types. So this was the tutorial about binary counting and variables. I hope you enjoyed it. In the description there's a link to this course material as always. And if you have any questions, please put them down in the comments and I'll try to answer them as best as I can and as fast as possible. See you in the next episode.